like. Uh, Let's go to the creepy ass convenience store in the dark. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Jamal Andrews. And I'm Katherine Beek, and we're here to talk one of the funniest scenes from Scream Queens last night. I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say the funniest scene for me out of the three hours we've watched so far. Yes. Boone's death was ruled a suicide. Wait, wait. I heard a rumor Boone killed himself. That's what I just said. Guys, Boone's throat was sliced open, which A is an unusual way to kill yourself. Well, I think that's pretty sound. You know, I think it would be hard to commit suicide by slicing your own throat. I was gonna say, and to be fair, he does a great job, a lot better than the detectives, to be honest, because he noticed the blood stains walking all the way to the bathroom and walking back. You would think if they were working in the detective profession, they could figure that out, well, right? I've decided that the law enforcement <laughs> in this area is not really competent. Yeah, yeah, Niecy Nash is actually doing some detective work. And you are what us detectives call a person of extreme murderous interest. And it seems to be way more important than the <laughs> coroner and the detectives in the area. This entire fraternity is like eight guys, lots of pastel and polos. Right, and before they go out to catch the Red Devil murderer because of, you know, the street code that they've enforced. Yes. With wooden bats. With wooden bats, not to be forgotten. They also coordinated as well. They were all wearing all white. Which kind of made them glow in the dark. <laughs> Just saying, like, if you're trying to sneak up on the Red Devil murderer, let's not wear white. Let's not wear white. Instead of taking that time to pick out your all-white outfits, why don't you get a better weapon? Yeah. Calling you out! It's the ghetto code, bro! Oh my goodness, I died laughing. 90s flashback. Now the Red Devil shows up, and you would think maybe this 90s groove party will stop. Oh, hey, Red Devil! It doesn't. No, no, the music keeps playing. You know, I think they were really sure that they could take on the Red Devil murderer that had a chainsaw. <laughs> Chad Redwell finds himself in a compromising, problematic position. Frat boys being frat boys, man, you gotta defend the leader of the pack. Chad Redwell! They are. I was gonna say, ride or die is the one that comes to mind. They are loyal. Loyal. The Dickie Dollar Scholars are incredibly loyal. Chad Radwell, I'm glad he's alive. He's one of the funniest characters on the show. Oh my goodness. As the much most as you hate him. He has a collection of Chanel's. Yeah, he dates all of them. <laughs> it's a revolving door for Chad Radwell. We'll see if he can, you know, get a hold of a brace face. But, you know, <laughs> do tell. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks, guys.